Ground control to Major Tom. Uh, testing, testing. Am I coming through loud and clear? I certainly hope so. This is my first uh, gameplay commentary uh, that I'm recording with my new microphone. And I personally think it sounds friggin' so much better than this terrible, terrible headset. And I'm just so happy I don't have to wear a friggin' headset anymore. I'm sick of sweaty ears, man. Not good. So, uh, you know... Let me know what you guys think of it. I think it sounds awesome. So hopefully from here on out, we're going to have some um, much, much better audio quality with the commentary. So uh, anyway, guys, welcome back to Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater. Now, I'd actually already recorded the rest of this virtual mission. I think it was uh, three or four more videos worth. But that, that was with my old headset. I thought, you know what? Let's let's scrap those. Let's do it again with a new microphone. So uh, here we are. What a lovely view we got there in the background. But anyway, let's crack on. So we don't actually get to see any real gameplay last time, do we, because of the super long intro, and we're not really going to see get to see much <laughs> this time, but uh, we'll see a little bit. Anyways, we've got to get that backpack, which is up there on that tree branch. Uh, Snake lost it on his way down when he parachuted. Uh, oh, actually, have we got um, something moving around? Yes, we have got wildlife in this uh, game. You can hunt. I think we've got a frog. So it doesn't matter if snakes and stuff. Where is it? You can basically um, kill them. Let's get a bit further down. Oh, no, there we go. I got a little, ba a little bastard. Yeah, you can uh, kill them and uh, use them for food. Um, so, yeah, it's pretty cool. So I've just hunted my first frog. Wasn't really a hunt, was it? I just I killed the frog, basically. Anyway, right, we go up here. Um, we've got some life medicine. Let's slide on down. Let's get that backpack. So what we go. Let's climb this tree. That's the one. There it is. Alright, let's swing down and grab this. Bingo. Alright. I see you've retrieved your backpack, Snake. To equip a weapon, it's necessary to take it out of your backpack. In the survival viewer, choose weapon from the backpack. Your available weapons will be displayed in a window in the upper left. From that list, choose the weapon you want to equip and press the enter button. For other equipped items, just do the same thing from item. Got it. Use the survival viewer backpack. Yep, that's right. Survival is fundamental to this mission. After you've been out in the field for a while, your stamina will start to drop. If your stamina gets too low, it'll affect your performance. You won't be able to shoot accurately, for example, and your wounds won't heal as smoothly. Keep an eye on your stamina so you don't run out. To recover lost stamina, you can hunt for local flora and fauna. You can use either your tranquilizer gun or your knife to hunt. My only weapon is a Mark 22 Hush Puppy tranquilizer gun? That's right. It's been fitted with its own suppressor. However, the suppressor will deteriorate every time you fire. Once its durability reaches zero, the noise suppression effect will be gone. So don't get too trigger happy with it. The suppressor's durability is shown in the icon. Any weapons and equipment beyond what you're carrying now, you'll have to find as you go. I have to find my own weapons and equipment? Whose crazy idea was this anyway? Solo covert actions are standard Fox operating procedure. You can't leave any traces of your presence. No weapons, equipment, footprints, sweat, or bodily waste. The same goes for bullets and cartridges, too. Your presence in enemy territory is already a violation of international conventions of warfare. There aren't supposed to be any American soldiers in Russia. It could spark an international incident. You can't let anyone see you. You can't let the enemy know you're there. This is a stealth mission. You're a ghost snake in every sense of the word. And there'll be no rescue if you're captured. The military and U.S. government will deny any involvement in the affair. Then I'll just have to take care of myself, huh? I'm afraid so. You've been given a fake death pill for that purpose. SIS guidelines stipulate that soldiers on covert ops like this one be issued a potassium cyanide capsule. Tape it to your body so you can take it when you need to. How generous of you. Use it if you're taken prisoner by the enemy. It'll send you into a state of false death for a short time. Fooling them into thinking that I'm really dead. So, how do I come back to life? Just take the revival pill. You mean that thing they put in my tooth before the mission? That's the one. But be careful. 
If you remain in a state of false death for too long, nothing will be able to bring you back. Remember that. I'll keep it in mind. You said this was a solo mission, right? Right. I guess that means I can't count on any reinforcements. Correct. The mission rests entirely in your hands. A real one-man army. Relax. There's a support team ready to back you up over the radio. Who? I'll introduce them to you. This time, survival is of utmost importance. The first member of the support team will be in charge of monitoring your physical condition, acting as a medic, so to speak, as well as recording your mission data. She's a member of Fox as well, and she's here on the gunship with me. She? Hello, Snake. I'm paramedic. Nice to meet you. Paramedic? As in a medic who comes in by parachute. Aren't you going to tell me your real name? Are you going to tell me yours, Mr. Snake? My name, huh? It's John Doe. And they call you Jack for short. You're a regular Captain Nemo. A name means nothing on the battlefield. After a week, no one has a name. What's your name? Jane Doe. Very funny. I wasn't joking, but I'll tell you my name only if you manage to make it back alive. My frequency is 145.73. She's also in charge of recording your mission data. Whenever you want to save, send a message over the reserved save frequency. 140.96. So saving lets me record my mission data. That's right. It also records the state of your health. Good to know. There's one more person I want to introduce you to, Snake. Huh? Speaking of snakes, you remember the boss, don't you? A legendary soldier and your mentor. Actually, it was the boss that got the DCI's authorization in the first place. She's going to be serving as Fox's mission advisor. The boss is? She also helped me plan this mission. She and I were at SAS together. Jack, is that you? How many years has it been? Boss? That's right. It's me. Oh. Talk to me. Let me hear your voice. It's been five years, 72 days, and 18 hours. You've lost weight. You can tell just by the sound of my voice. Of course I can. I know all about you. Really? Well, I don't know anything about you. What's that supposed to mean? Why'd you disappear on me all of a sudden? I was on a top secret mission. Hmm. You didn't need me anymore. But there were still so many things I wanted you to teach me. No, I taught you everything you needed to know about fighting techniques. I taught you all I could. The rest you needed to learn on your own. Techniques, sure. But what about how to think like a soldier? How to think like a soldier? I can't teach you that. A soldier needs to be strong in spirit, body, and technique. And the only thing you can learn from someone else is technique. In fact, technique doesn't even matter. What's most important is spirit. Spirit and body are like two sides of a single coin. They're the same thing. I can't teach you how to think. You'll just have to figure it out for yourself. Listen to me, Jack. Just because soldiers are on the same side right now doesn't mean they always will be. Having personal feelings about your comrades is one of the worst sins you can commit. Politics determine who you face on the battlefield. And politics are a living thing. They change along with the times. Yesterday's good might be tomorrow's evil. Is that why you abandoned me? No, it had nothing to do with you. I already told you, Jack, I was on a top secret mission. A soldier has to follow whatever orders he's given. It's not his place to question why. But you're looking for a reason to fight. You're a natural-born fighter, but you're not quite a soldier. A soldier is a political tool, nothing more. That's doubly true if he's a career soldier. Right and wrong have no place in his mission. He has no enemies and no friends. Only the mission. You follow the orders you're given. That's what being a soldier is. I do whatever I have to to get the job done. I don't think about politics. That's not the same thing. Sooner or later, your conscience is going to bother you. In the end, you have to choose whether you're going to live as a soldier or just another man with a gun. There's a saying in the Orient, loyalty to the end. Do you know what it means? Being patriotic. It means devoting yourself to your country. 
I follow the President and the Top Brass. I'm ready to die for them if necessary. The President and the Top Brass won't be there forever. Once their terms are up, others will take their place. I follow the will of the leader, no matter who's in charge. People aren't the ones who dictate the missions. Then who does? The times. People's values change over time, and so do the leaders of a country. So there's no such thing as an enemy in absolute terms. The enemies we fight are only enemies in relative terms, constantly changing with the times. As long as we have loyalty to the end, there's no point in believing in anything, even in those we love. And that's the way a soldier's supposed to think. The only thing we can believe in with absolute certainty is the mission, Jack. All right, but do me a favor. What is it? Call me Snake. Snake? Oh, right. Your code name is Snake. It suits you well. That's right. The legendary unit that the boss put together during World War II was a snake. The Cobra unit. A group of heroes that brought the war to an end and saved the world. As long as you've got a legendary hero backing you up, you'll be fine. Isn't that right, Snake? Yeah. I can't think of anyone else I'd rather have with me. Oh, and one more thing, boss. Yes? It's good to hear your voice again. Same here. After all, who knows if either of us will make it out alive. Snake, you are always best at urban warfare and infiltrating buildings. But this is the jungle. Survival is going to be key. Those CQC techniques I taught you are sure to come in handy. CQC? Close quarters combat, huh? I've been in the Green Berets for the past few years. I'm probably pretty rusty. Not to worry. I'll be here to help you remember. After all, this is your first actual survival mission. I'll be supporting you over the radio. Where are you, boss? Next to the Major? The boss is communicating with us by radio from aboard a permit-class submarine in the Arctic Ocean. My frequency is 141.80. Call me if you need my advice on battle techniques. Gotcha. Your mission is to retrieve Dr. Sokolov. Dr. Sokolov is being held in an abandoned factory located to the north of your current position. Avoid heavy combat and don't let anyone see you. Don't forget that this is a stealth mission. Snake, try to remember some of the basics of CQC. Commencing virtuous mission now. All right. Commencing virtuous mission. Ah, we have a snake. We got snake versus snake. I'm gonna knife it. Cause who knows? Maybe, maybe it tastes nice. There we go. All right. Let's uh, let's crack on. Yeah, that was the boss there, who is one of my. All-time favorite character in the series, but Boss is just awesome. She is just badass. All right, I don't know how you pronounce off these. The Dramushi, ah, we'll just call it the Swamp Lion. That'll do. It's a swamp, but a pretty dangerous swamp because uh, we got um, we got a few alligators that like to knock around in this swamp, and well, alligators or crocodiles or whatever they're actually called in this game. The point is, they're freaking deadly. Look at them. We got one over there. I believe there's another one hiding in those leaves over there. Uh, yeah, we've got two waiting there, two waiting over there. You gotta watch out. They like to um, try and grab you, and they like to whip you with their tails. So I'll tell you what. Let's uh, let's take one out. And the best way to do that, to have any sort of chance without dying, let's tranquilize it, put it to sleep. There we get up close. Give it a bit of that, and somehow it still hasn't woke up. This might be knife to death. Come on, they're pretty goddamn tough. Come on. Wow, man, he refused to die, but he's dead now. And I got myself some lovely, tasty gavial. Gavial. I'm just gonna call it an alligator or something. I don't know. Alright, so yeah, this uh, big mud, sort of mud pit thing we got going on here, uh, 
you start to sink in it so if I tried to just walk straight across here to get to the uh, exit over there I'd be dead because if, if it goes up to, like gets up to your neck that's it game over so I'm gonna have to uh, let's go over this way to the, uh, to the left as you can see I'm sinking here pretty fast Watch out for oh god I think this one's on to me it's on to me let's uh, if I can try and get past it it's gonna whip me with its tail so let's put it to sleep oh man it didn't didn't work it is angry I think it's because I I think it's because I didn't get it in its head that was sort of its back but I like how you get the uh, mud on your camo there that's pretty cool nice attention to detail as I previously said very 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 impressive for a PS2 game alright let's go over here and out of this stinking mud on to the next area here we go this is the northern part Major, I've spotted two enemy soldiers. They're probably KGB troops sent to guard Sokolov. AK-47s and grenades. Snake, your presence in Soviet territory is already a violation of international law. We can't let the Kremlin find out that the CIA and the American government are involved. Contact with the enemy is strictly prohibited. Don't engage them in battle, either. This is a stealth mission. Got that? The Major is right. The point of this mission is to sneak through the jungle without being seen. The success of the mission depends on how well you use your camouflage. Change your camouflage by selecting Camouflage from the Survival Viewer. The Uniform option lets you pick your uniform, while the Face option lets you change your face paint. Choosing camouflage that blends in with your surroundings will help you conceal yourself more effectively. Also, don't forget that anything that moves will stand out in the jungle. If you just stand up and run around like an idiot, you're bound to be spotted. But if you crawl instead, you should be able to sneak by without being noticed. You can see how effective your camouflage is by looking at the camo index. The camo index shows how well your current camouflage blends in with the surrounding area. The higher the value, the harder you are to spot, and vice versa. The key is to make yourself one with nature. Keep that in mind as you go along, okay? All right. Yeah, the camo's a really cool feature. Let me just uh, give you a quick run down a bit before we end this video so uh, yeah you can uh, change your uniform and stuff and you know, obviously you know it depends what your environment is and you got to sort of try and match up the colors and stuff uh, so we've got naked which looks freaking cool but obviously the most exposed there and uh, easy to spot we've got the olive drought which I'm wearing right now tiger stripe that actually seems to be the best one right now give me a uh, plus was it 25 there uh, leaf tree bark squares it's not ideal for that begins walls and stuff and we've got black there it's really cool and you can get more later on as the game as you progress so yeah it's a really cool feature uh, you can do the well actually let's uh, let's get the um, the tiger stripe on actually no um hang on no leaf looks like it's giving them more so let's uh let's go with leaf okay you can change your face as well got some woodland black splitter and oh dear god oh that looks way too similar to someone from um Metal Gear Solid 2 who I hate Ugh. no no let's uh let's go with the let's go with the woodland camo that looks cool yeah it's a really nice feature the whole camo stuff really really cool we have our first enemies now enemies are definitely a lot smarter in this game than they are in the previous two in fact, they were kind of dumb in the previous two and 
I might have some difficulty here since I put it on the hard difficulty as well. And oh, God, I thought that was on his head. That was. Yeah, they're uh, the be the good. They, they can spot you from uh, a longer distances, and they panic a lot more, and they're more prone to having you know uh, alarm triggers. So you really got to be careful. Um, I'm no doubt going to mess up, and there'll be some messy situations, no doubt. I mean, I screwed up in Metal Gear Solid 2, didn't I? Um, so I'm no doubt going to screw up in this. Let's oh mushrooms. What we got? All right, I'm crawling. I need to crawl. Let's get up. Um, what have we got uh, in this? Um, this log right here. Bug juice. That's for uh, keeping leeches off you and stuff, I think. Now, actually, there is a... Um, there should be a new weapon over this way. Let's have a see what we got. Should be over here. There we go. We have picked up a SVD. I nearly said STD then. We don't want to pick up one of them. It's the last thing one, isn't it? Mission over. Got a serious case of gonorrhea. That one will be good. So there we go. That's a sniper rifle. We've got another snake there as well. But I'm going to leave it be. Let's uh, crack on back over this way. So, there is a few more enemies ahead. I think maybe two or three patrolling round, but I'm going to go ahead and end this one here, and then next time I'll see if I can sneak past or take care of these enemies one way or another, and see if we can get to uh, Sokolov. So, uh, as usual guys, thanks for watching, I'll see you all next time. <laughs>